All right, I'm going to go ahead and call this regular school board meeting to order, uh, dated Monday, December 12th, 2022. And if everyone could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. All right, and um, let the record reflect that we have all board members present in council chambers with the exception of board member Todd, who is joining us via Zoom. And with that, we will go to, oh, let me turn the page. The review of minutes from the regular school board meeting dated 11-28-2022. Are there any um, comments or suggestions? If not, then the board or the um, meeting minutes will stand as presented. And uh, board member Tapp. There was only the, the one that I supported to you and Shannon before about the uh, wanting to get the work session um, publicized the meeting before. Yes. Can you explain that one? Yes, and I believe that Shannon, you made the change to that with that one? Yes. Yep, okay, so on the signed minutes, it'll be changed. She is going to add that the work session for the following meeting will be announced at the regular school board meeting, the current regular school board meeting meaning during today's meeting, it will be mentioned what the work session for January 12th will be. Any other comments or questions or additions to the meeting minutes? Nope. Okay. And the, can we vote on that again? I can't remember. No, okay. Then the meeting minutes will stand as presented. And next item on the agenda is uh, public comment. Do we have any public comment on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we will move on to reports and introductions. And so for under reports, we have the superintendent report. So Mr. Bauer. Thank you, President Hinkle. Uh, it's been a pretty busy couple of weeks leading up to Christmas. It's been exciting. I, I do uh, just want to thank the administrators. We've had a lot of, for medical, for a variety of uh, very legitimate reasons, we've had some absences, and I, I'm just impressed by the administrative staff and covering for everybody, and it's, it's just nice, the collaboration on that front and, and uh, working together. It's been wonderful. Uh, so I do want to say thank you to the admin team. Uh, uh, Christmas party was Saturday. That was a great success. I, I think um, it was, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on that. It was just fun to, to see, uh, you know, just that people have a good time and celebrate what, uh, what we do for, all, for these kids. Uh, prior to that was the Nutcracker, which I am, uh, I continue to be amazed by the amount of talent in, the, in, in Valdez, just in general, it's just going to the art room for one, but then watching the Nutcracker, I was very impressed. It was just wonderful to see our students perform so well. Uh, the high school wrestling tournament was last week, and there's just so much going on, right? Go, so I just want to celebrate. Uh, and I do want to say Todd Wagner, I, <clears throat> you could call a lot of uh, administrators and ask them, hey, how's your, how's your athletics department going? And, and the word headache is going to show up somewhere on there. Uh, Todd, just I, I think uh, if I could spotlight him, he just does such a wonderful, incredible job, and everything is just seamless. With with no, if there are issues, I'm unaware of them, which means I'm going to assume there are no issues. So I just uh, want to congratulate Todd on and and all the all the coaches on just how well they work together. And, and uh, having a tournament is not an easy task in in all of those organizations. So I just I'm continually impressed. Uh, on the flip side, of morale in the buildings, uh, we're, we're just facing some challenges with uh, just 
and this is not a Valdez issue. This is an education issue. So I've been meeting with staff in different buildings and just having one-on-one -on -one conversations and group conversations and like, what do you need? What are the, what are the concerns? Uh, the, the concerns that have been brought forth at the secondary level are um, attendance, uh, having time to collaborate and, and uh, discipline and behaviors that they're witnessing, increasing behaviors in the, in the buildings that were all, all three of those were addressing. And um, in my communication with the staff is we, these are not being ignored. Um, please come talk to me if there's specific issues, but I'll just let the staff know what's, what has been done and what's being done. Uh, vertical alignment tool has been decided and it's the power school uh, tool that we're going to use and purchase that has been ordered. Uh, we are going to do a slow, very slow rollout in the spring, just an introduction uh, to present to staff. And, and this is, again, this is not a solution to everything, but it is one key ingredient to, and a, and a tool that will help uh, facilitate a lot of other things that we can build on. Um, I mean, I, I just, I'm excited about this because I happen to be in the middle school on the first day with auditions. And I don't know if I've been excited about seeing a play more than the Lion King this Thursday. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I said, throw it in my report because I am genuinely excited. Uh, my, uh, my travel out of the district, I will be out uh, the December 20th through the 27th, just with my family. Uh, and then I'll be back on the, on the 28th of December. So I'll be up. But I, I would like to take this time to call Peyton Gage as a, a student rep for our National Honor Society. Um, he would like to share some uh, uh, project that the National Honor Society would like to propose. Thank you, Thank you Peyton. Of course, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Peyton Gage, and I am the president of NHS. Um, we are an organization focused on scholarship, leadership, character, and service. And every year we select uh, a project that we do um, either to help our school or our community. And last year we chose that we're gonna upgrade our gym and by painting above the doorway. So um, we hired a mural artist, a mural artist, uh, Kelly Hales, um, and she will come in and do the painting for us so uh, that students don't have to be on the scaffolding. And um, uh, we decided on a final design, which I believe was verified passed out to all of you. Um, so I believe when, we, when you walk in the door to the gym, if you look across, you'll see the Valdez. Valdez will be on like right across and then above you will be Buccaneers. Um, so that was a design we decided on today. Um, $2,000 is the price. Um, and um, we need to talk with Mr. Reese to coordinate uh, next week for a time frame on when we're going to get it done. Um, hopefully before basketball games start at the home home games. Um, but that is what we have going on. At NHS. Oh yes, yes. We already we're not asking for money. We already got the money. Uh, thanks to Beta Club. Beta Club. Uh, is a huge um, part in that. They raised over $3,000, I believe, last year during the surplus sale. So thank you, Beta Club. Yeah, so we go. Thank you. So Mr. Bauer, you all, under the reports there, we also have the business report, the special education board report, Technology Innovation Board Report, um, Herman Hutchins Elementary School Board Report, and then the Gilson Middle School Board Report. Are you going to be presenting those or how? Well, uh, with your permission, uh, President Hinkle, at this time, I'd like to call uh, Melissa Reese up to give her report. Okay, yeah, that, that works. Certainly. Okay. Not quite that tall. <laughs> Melissa Reese, Director of Technology, and um, I also am responsible for assessment and curriculum 
And so with this board report, I focused on the assessment portions of the Alaska Reads Act. So, so that's what is in here. This um, report outlines, so the, the state with their Alaska Reads Act, they have requirements for the, the state to select a, a screener, an assessment for all schools to use it up to third grade. And all of the requirements of that screener are the requirements that the schools are required to do. So that is all listed out there. Um, and so the, the tool that the state selected is called M-Class. It's an Amplify product. And it's, if anybody's familiar, it's, it's Dibbles, which you know is widely used. So that's the product that the, the state has selected for the screener. Schools can apply for a waiver to use some other tool, but this tool meet, you know, checks all the boxes and the state will pay for it <clears throat> for everybody to use it. Um, and so the elementary currently has um, an RTI plan that has assessment listed in it that are very similar to this. And so this isn't totally foreign, but COVID kind of, well, it blew up everything. So we need to kind of get back into the groove with early literacy, you know, those, and, and that's what they're doing. I mean, everybody's doing their jobs, getting, you know, trying to get the kids back in school, attendance and, and all that. So, so this just lists out the, the screeners that the state requires that we do, you know, three times a year to help check, make sure that students are on track. And then as Mr. Bauer alluded to it earlier in the work session, talking about that interventionalist, then the interventionist would, would help, you know, with the students who were struggling to help those kids get some, some makeup growth and get them caught up a little bit. <laughs> So the kindergarten level, looking at phonemic awareness, letter naming fluency, sound fluency, letter sound fluency, and then letter word sound fluency. And we did a lot of, we've done, the elementary's had quite a bit of training on reading with um, some national wide trainers. And one thing that I remember as the key leading indicator of early you know, literacy was that letter sound fluency. So, so just making sure that students know their sounds. First grade, more, more, letter word fluency there, some oral reading fluency, and second, third grades of vocabulary will be a new assessment, I think, for the elementary school, the oral reading fluency they've been doing, you know, for a while. Fourth and fifth grade are not required <coughs> to use the screeners. However, when the state purchases it, it will be available for fourth and fifth grade use for those students who, who need the extra, extra boost there and who need that progress monitoring. Any questions? So, and the, the Alaska Reads Act is pretty big, and so I just broke out the assessment portion of it to just kind of present it in in chunks. It, it's it's it was it 45 pages. It's very very broad. And when I first started reading it, it started talking about the number of hours kids had to be in school, and I was like, wait a minute. But I thought that's already established. What what is so? But on the later pages, it really got into the the meat of. So so are there any um, questions or comments for? This is Reese, and if you have any, if you could just keep them to the board report, if there's anything additional or that you're requesting more information on, um, those requests should go through Mr. Bauer. And so um, we just need to make sure that if there's any further information needed that we, we um, push those through Mr. Bauer. But if there's any questions on the report or what was presented here, we can certainly ask Mrs. Reese. Um, and then to that point, too, our work session in January will be on the Reads Act. So that is what the January 12th work session will be, uh, topic will be. And I noticed that um, board member Todd has her hand up. I don't know if that's from before or if she actually has a question or something. Nope. Okay. So no comments or questions. All right. Thank, Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, you want to go with the ones you have here, or do you want, um, there's the business report, special education report, HHES report, GMS. Sorry, there are no questions. <laughs> um, I'd like to call um, Jason Weber, HHES -H -H report. With your permission, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, it's been a real busy time at HHS. Um, 
We got last week, we had a lot going on. Uh, maps testing, uh, we got through our winter go round. Uh, the same time we have winter concerts going on, we had a fire drill, everything else. So, um, but um, in early indicators went well, went fairly typical for maps testing. So. Uh, music concert took place on December 7th um, and the fifth graders uh, had their play on, on the 8th and uh, Shay did a fantastic job with the kids and the kids did just an, an amazing job. I, I couldn't believe to see kindergartners moving around because I do recess with them almost every single day and I blow the whistle and they go the other way half the time. So um, I thought it was just fantastic. Um, so um, hearing and vision screening were conducted on December 5th through 7th. So that was kind of, you know, Another thing going on that week. Uh, teachers are working hard to close out their grade books, uh, as well as assist, assisting kids uh, with last minute work and catching up on, you know, all these trips that have taken place in the last <laughs> four weeks. So um, the literacy challenge uh, was really good the first semester or the first semester, and we're going to continue that next semester. So um, I talked with Ms. Calipetro, who kind of helps lead that up with the Literacy Council. Uh, Ms. Calpetro has also been working hard with our group of students after school working on reading skills. A lot of uh, a lot of our, some of our third grade students she works really hard with. So, um, under collaboration professional time, um, we've been using our last our last time was last last Friday when we were to, last Friday before that actually we had a little Christmas party last week. Um, during collaboration time, we spend time working going over our um, ALDs our our. Um, um, our achievement level descriptors for ELA and math. Uh, teachers are able to kind of look at their scope and sequence as we're looking ahead to next semester and figure out kind of, okay, when are we teaching things and are, are we teaching something that needs, that we need, to, we need to move up before the test that's going to be checked off during the test. So, you know, so that's going to happen in April. So if we're teaching it in May, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we took some time to look over that. We're going to review them again in January to make sure we're, you know, doing things in the correct order because if we're working hard we should get credit for that hard work and it's unfair <laughs> you know if the kids don't get that credit if we teach it out of sequence that way um teachers spend time um learning about the m class as melissa um, had talked about earlier um we're we we're just going to jump in um next fall and go with the teachers understand that we'll move away from ames web um but we're currently using some of those pieces and that's fine. Um, the nice part about going to M class is that there isn't a whole bunch of data reports to do at the end of the year because it's all going to funnel right through the state. Um, and that's what they want to know. We're going to get the same data. Um, it's just a different client and we'll save the money not paying for it um, through these other, other, other means we can use that for our kids, um, maybe for other things Mr. Bowers talked about and stuff like that, whatever. Um, our P, our, our, um, P through one teachers, uh, we use a lot of Hegarty. The state's really big on it as well, as far as the Reads Act goes. Uh, so we took some time out um, as well to make sure we're using it with as much efficiency as possible. And also to let teachers sit down and kind of share kinds of ways that they're using it, maybe that are slightly more effective than the other teachers. So we can kind of um, be on top of that. And we're finding, you know, we can go all the way down to three-year-old now. There's, there's actually a piece. So, um, and that's a lot of that phonemic awareness. and it's, it, it's a really cool lesson. It takes about six to seven minutes, but the amount of learning that can take place in six to seven minutes, I wish I could have 50 of these programs um, that are, are that quick to make those gains in a day. And the kids are very actively involved. When you see the book, it looks really boring though. So, uh, but when you see the kid, the hand movements and the kinetics that go along with it, it's not just sit and do worksheets or anything. They're physically talking and moving. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, and staff continue to um, implement the ELA resources that were purchased last year. Uh, and Ms. Uh, Reese has been uh, very helpful with that as well. Um, engagement, um, our weekly morning assemblies continue to bear fruit. Um, I've got, you know, it seems like fewer and fewer kids in my office, and that means more and more time for me to get out of there and into classrooms and spending time. So um, and I, a lot of times now when I get a kid in the office, I can talk to them directly about the engagement you know, the strategies they need to use. So the work Ms. Juicy is doing with the students has been really helpful as well. Um, she spends time with the leadership group, which helps also help plan a lot of the activities take place in the school. So um, I have many chances to um, 
go out and observe teachers and students in the classrooms through both the formal evaluations and the Elliott observations I do. Um, and it's a great opportunity just to see what's going on in the building. And there's a lot of great learning that I can't just put every single detail into our board report, but we've got some really good teachers. Um, and so it's really fun to go in there and see there's different teaching styles, but just the student engagement, the students are excited to be in there. So um, I do enjoy getting to go out there and see that engagement. Um, Battle of the Books, something that a lot of kids get involved with. Um, and Ms. Critchell has been doing that during our lunchtime. Um, she'll have the kids will be eating lunch and then talking about the questions in the book, but they're doing a lot of the reading outside of school and stuff like that. So um, our art club um, has got 20 plus kids, I'm sure, in it at this point. Um, Spirit Club, Chess Club has got filled to the max. Um, they continue to be very popular with the kids after school. So it's it's nice to kind of have a little bit more of that pre-middle school engagement level stuff because I think that's what they get when they get to middle school. They've got six, seven things that they can always do, but elementary, trying to form that and scaffold it into a, into a level that's meaningful for kids. Um, it's really great that these teachers stood up and took and did these activities with the kids. So. Um, concerns, I've got, I've got attendance down here. I know you guys were talking about it earlier. Um, I did a report last Monday, students with 10 or more absence, regardless of reason, 109. I had 186 kids with over six absences. So this is, you know, I, you know, I look at, you know, we need to raise our scores. And I look at what can I do? Where, what areas can I look at? If I can get kids here. I can get them in front of teachers more because I know the teachers are teaching. I know they got good stuff. And so I've worked with me and Ms. Uh, Juicy Meet every single week. We're in communication with Mr. McCombie. We have done house calls, phone calls, letters. I've, you know, and I, I do understand that there's some parents who, you know, aren't happy with the letters. Um, but I send them out at six days regardless of reason. But you know, for every angry one I get, I get six or seven parents who email me or communicate with me and are like, I didn't realize it. We're going to look at what we can do better next semester. And it's not designed, the six day letter is not really supposed to be punitive. It's just letting people know, hey, it's an issue. I mean, once we get into six absences, and some of them are completely legit, you know, it's, it's not their fault. Their kid, get, you know, got COVID and then got something else. You know, they broke their leg. They had to go to a medical appointment. A family member died. Those are very legitimate reasons. But there's also a lot of things I see that are not legitimate. I, I see parents call their kid in, and then I see the kid running around town on their bike. So I, I don't know. Um, so we're going to continue to push it. Um, I, I made it a point to start the year that we we're going to attack it and see what we can do about it. Um, and we'll try different things. Um, until we start making some ground up. And I, I hope we are already. I hope that by the work that we're doing, it's, it's, it's maybe it's 109, but maybe that's less than 130. We don't know what it would have been. Um, but um, another thing, students experiencing trauma. Uh, I spent a lot of time last week with other agencies and stuff like that. There's a lot going on in the community. So another thing, the kids are bringing stuff from home in. So um, the things going on in the home aren't always great. So. Those are some of the things we spend a lot of time on. Um, and sometimes it's there's, there's three siblings or multiple siblings that are being affected at the same time by that trauma. So um, solving shortages, there's really not much you guys can do to help me here, um, unless you can invent human beings out of thin air and just make them happen. But we're doing our best. Um, we haven't had to cancel a whole lot, but there's times where we can't do library and things like that. But um, we're getting we're getting through where the kids have some have a high quality adult in front of them every single day so um, i'm happy with that um but it is a concern as as the longer you go kind of working with less the, the more tired you get it's like playing basketball with four and a half people or something like that eventually you know fourth quarter is going to come and you get more tired so my my worry is later in the year not right now um and then last thing is the curtain in the gym um I hope someday it makes it that we actually just replace it. It's it doesn't go up and down. It's it looks like the cables back to the angle, and I think it shuts off the motor or something. I don't know, um, but it doesn't go up and down. 
So and it's we've been working with it, been working with maintenance and Mr. Bauer for months now. So hopefully we can get that going because I, I get a lot of phone calls from um, after hours and and then constantly trying to get it up, get it down, get it up, get it down. Oh, we have to do inside recess because it's <laughs> blowing 75 and <laughs> it's getting pretty cold out there. Um, so those are kind of the main concerns I've got at the building level. Um, and then lastly, just kind of celebrations. Um, uh, we had a great student teacher come to us from Michigan. She emailed me and I was like, want to come up? Sure. So I talked to her for a while and she, she sought us out and I was like, that's pretty cool. So I, I talked to her references, good references, so like, come on up. And so actually worked out. She, she came up, she actually stayed with Pam Verify and uh, uh, she did her student teaching in third grade and um, really got to know the staff and the community. And hopefully we planted a good seed and she returns one day. So um, I think those are really important parts of growing teachers. And we're part of a network or, you know, you know web of schools across the country. So the more we can do to grow them is good. And we got, we had an opportunity to work with a really good young teacher and kind of, and so she might go back down there and, hey, my experience in Alaska was great. And one of her friends might be the one who replaced her up here. So um, it's good. Um, so we wish her the best of luck. and. Uh, She's been with us first semester. Um, the after the bell art students really went above and beyond. Um, a lot of the decorations and the concerts and stuff like that, that was kids staying not only until the bus left, but sometimes uh, even later than that, Miss Muni would be in there and other teachers would be in there working with those kids. So they, they put in some extra effort kind of helping with those, those, act, those parts of it. So that was really neat. Um, and then the last thing, I've, I've already said it, but you know, thanks to Shay for the, the music concert. I, it's a lot to take on, and that was her first one. And um, I thought it was, I, I really enjoyed it. The only thing I would have done, I would move the stage back 20 feet so we could have even more people in there. But um, it's hard to remember days before COVID sometimes and kind of just exactly how to maximize. You want all the seats filled so everyone can be as close to the stage as possible. But um, I, that, would, that would be the only thing I would have done differently um, right off the start. So there's always little things, but they did a really good job. So she deserves some credit for that. So. Um, other than that, did anybody have any questions for me? Um, first, thank you for doing these and for all the directors that do them. It really helps give me an idea of what's going on in your areas. I appreciate that. Um, I was pretty blown away at the attendance numbers in our um, work session. Can you tell me what's the process? of how does it go for you as a, as a student goes from one to two to three to 10 days absent? What is your, what's the response and what does the parent have to do? What do you mean? Um, so exactly, sure. So I, uh, if they're absent the first day, I can, I get a, I'm assuming it's the same it's a, as the same, high school. Same I get a text, school. I get yeah. a call, I get a robocall. Yep. And, um, and then I can respond and say, well, it's excused or it isn't. Yep. And then at, at what point does it change for you that we, a, a red we, flag goes up? We look up for or... trends. I'll, I'll say this hypothetical student. Okay? I'm starting to notice, oh, man, I'm seeing like two, three absences or tardies this week. Then I'm seeing a clean week. And then I'm starting to see it again. And so then I start talking with the family and figure out, Oh wait, the student might be staying with mom this week and dad this week, and then we start kind of working with the appropriate party, and then we start sitting down and trying to figure out what we can do with with that. We're looking for things that are out of the ordinary. Johnny, who we know is home with with, with a cold and sick, you know, because brother and sister are still in school, but they're just out. That's not as it doesn't look very odd. We're looking for flags in the data uh, because. You know, 300 students, you, you have to, there is only so much of us and so much time we can dedicate to just that task. But we're looking for those those red flags. Um, and then that's why I have Ms. Juicy helping with it too, is what's going on in the family. Because she has a lot of the knowledge that um, is not privy to really beyond her office. Is, is there something we need to know um, going on here that, you know, might be causing this or or... Uh, other cases we're working with OCS, um, but it, when we're really, I have the, the secretary's running reports. And so right now we've been using the board reports or the board policy, which has the six and 10 day policies. 
outlined in it. Um, we should probably, you know, one of the things just you know, off the top of my head is probably start looking at a three day run and stuff like that um, as, as part of it. Um, one of the things that I was talking with my secretaries is about is how long after, how long, how far back can you, know, you as a parent, how far back can you go and change that absence to excuse? You know, as happened in October, can you call back today and say, I'm just excusing all those absences in October, your kid might have been doing whatever, you know. But it starts kind of changing the game on us. So it's like you, you could send that out and say, well, these are all the reasons, and you know, you're they're in trouble for this. And then the parent can go, well, no, no, I'm excusing all of them. Why? I, because I am. What well, is that yeah. something yeah, that, say, is, that we policy? can can we address that in the policy or something? Possibly. That seems crazy. I, I don't know. And that's one of those questions that came up to me. So I'm just I'm just yeah, no, that's, that's some that's of the things that, that we're and, we're talking about. And I didn't even know that was even. And that was a question that had come up just with secretaries and us kind of going, you know, how far back we, you know, is it a big issue? I don't think it's a huge issue, but are there people doing it from time to time? Yeah. Um, so, you know, although when you read the policy, one of the things that st stands out is you get six days. It, I'm glad it doesn't say what the reason is for the absence because that gives me the leeway to send the six day letter, which I, I really think is important. But at 10 day, to make that 10 day rule stick, everything under the sun can almost count towards that. And, you know, as a parent, you can look at that and go, well, then I'm going to say it's this, and I'm going to say it's this, this. You know, if everybody did it honestly, that, that would be great. That we could, that'd be a great deal. But the problem is, is not everybody is going to. And the, at the end of the day, we just want the kids there with the teachers. And that's the hard part is how do you read through all all of that when you've got people so that, you know i i think our, our policy right now is it's long that's one of the things i i, I, I mean it seems like it's longer than it needs to be for that i mean the end of the day you need to be here it should be very um the the, the, the longer it is the more loopholes there are i guess is the way i look at it as an administrator who has to enforce it because that's at the end of the day how i I want them here, and the more loopholes there are, and reasons there can be to be out. Um, and it's hard. I mean, you know, I look, you know, because I count them the same way for my own kids, and, and my kids play a lot of sports, and, and so they're gone a lot for that. So I have to remind them that no, you don't get to miss any of those other days because you're already going to miss more than you should. But it's Alaska, and that's life, and you're not going to play sports if you can't do that. But you're also not going to go off to college and do well if you can't handle missing those sports and making up. So I do like the pre-makeup. I think Valdez does a really good job with the pre-makeup pieces, um, which I don't see every other school at work. For. I don't, I can't agree that I've seen it always done well. But I do like that piece the kids are taught right through middle school. They, they, they know they got to do it. There's no question. So it, it's, it's a fresh conversation and we haven't had all the, you know, if we we're just given the numbers. I think we're all taken aback. And uh, Melissa talked about it too when she was in your position, um, and and I think it's a it's an expectation that's most powerfully set in your building yeah. for for future. Um, and I'm not I don't mean to you know please cure it now I know yeah. that's not but you have ideas and um, and just the snowball effect of what this does to the teachers trying to get the kids caught up. And I would hope as um, if there's anywhere we can to put more, it should be difficult. Okay, I understand things happen. And I've had my, you know, we've gone for a vacation that overlapped school and things like that, but the work should be on us, not on you. Yep. And if there's things that we can turn around, I know we're, I know we're not going to do all of them, but man, we've got to reduce that somehow and make it at least uncomfortable for parents that that you know I can't just yeah, verbally I, send a slip. I've got to talk to the principal today. Yeah, I know this is day twelve. I know, um, and we just can't if they're not there. We you know, it's, you know I look at my teachers and they spend an awful lot of time for the pre makeup and they're here's that they get all printed out. They got all this stuff. Here you go. One thing and nothing comes back. Yeah, teacher puts in 30 minutes there that they could have put into other things. And 
right. to get no return on the investment is what right. I think it's, it's almost demoralizing, even more so oh. than the loss of time. Um, you know, with a lot of the grading things and talking you know, trends, is at least three or four teachers come up to me. How do I handle this grade? They they were out for this trip, this trip, this trip, this trip. Did they bring anything back? No. Okay, well, give them the grade they deserve. Wait a second. Make sure that we follow the policy though, because they get one day for each day. And then it's like, okay, we got to get them an incomplete until this day. And then so the teachers are kind of it, it, it just gets to be never ending dealing with absence. Where the kid has been there a the whole time, they're they're doing well and, and they can work with them. You know, then the kid just got these big chunks out all over the place. It's it's really tough on the teachers. And I think that makes their job harder. It makes you know, if you're if you're if you're planning something really cool, you put a lot of effort into it. And you've got say 18 kids in your class. You show up that ready to teach them Monday morning, and there's 13 there. The way you plan that lesson isn't going to be quite the same. It's not going to come off. So you do it anyway. You do a great job. Five kids show up later on that week. No clue what happened Monday. You know, so that you see you end up with holes all over the place uh, in your what the, you know. So we start looking at this kid in seventh and eighth grade. Why didn't they learn this? Well, they took they, they missed this really big piece when they were gone for three weeks in Cosmel or wherever they went. Um, so th th it is there isn't a there isn't a silver bullet. Unfortunately, I can't point you at a one district out there who's perfect. But um, our attendance issues are uniquely Valdez. When we when we approach the policy, we got to approach it that way because whatever Anchorage is, that's they, they have a completely different set of attendance issues out there than we have in Valdez. So. I would look at other schools, similar size, similar geography. Um, our location in Valdez does, you know, I'm a parent. I, I have to take off Thursday and Friday. I'm gonna go over and watch my, my son rest, my, my son and the other boy that lives with us <laughs> to watch them wrestle because um, they earned it. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, I wanna be there for them. So, but I, to get there, I have to take off Thursday so I can watch wrestling on Friday morning. You know, and I think many of you have already approached, you know, Joe, um, and you guys have, have already done this as parents, you know, mm -hmm. had to go over and take the extra day just to make sure you're there on time. So, um, so there's a, that travel piece that's all part of this. So, um, but yeah, so glad you guys are interested in it. Um, look forward to working with you guys on, if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to are there share other with you what I know. Comments or questions from board members? All right. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Rubber. All right. And do we just want to go through the rest of the reports with those that are here? Or are there any questions for the report that you've read? So we, I guess we have two, really. Um, we have okay. um, Amber Colley, who's the yeah, superintendent. Amber Colley, yeah. business manager. Please come up. One moment. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Um, board member Todd, you raise your hand there. I had a question for Amber. I didn't oh, know that okay. she was going to stand up. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, well, you can do your thing, and then we'll ask you that question. Sure. Um, I just had one thing to draw your attention to. Uh, we received an additional grant. It's a COVID school-based testing. It's at the very end of that grant section. Uh, we are currently paying our school nurse from it. She was being paid out of the uh, ESSER 3 grant, but we have an additional year to pay that out. So we had an opportunity at this one to pay salary, and we applied for it and are doing that. All right. So I did see, so board member Todd has a Question. So we'll start there and then we'll, if anybody else has questions here, okay, there's a couple other questions. So we'll start first with board member Todd. So um, could you just say something about the 38% paid out this year versus other years? And there was something that I can't scroll to there, but there was one of these that was almost all paid out. And I thought it was a, a um, thing that we pay personnel out of. And I was worried that um, where the money was coming from. One of the things that's up on the board at the moment, but not one that's showing at the moment. Um, and then the third one was, uh, my third question was that 
uh, ESSER two that we haven't spent any of, are we on track to spend it on the right things that we have to spend it on? <clears throat> there, that's the top one, the top one on the left, whatever that is, the preschool. Um, is that just supplies and stuff or are we in big trouble for second semester? Uh, no, that is about uh, like $6,000 grant. It's a very small grant. And so we spend it out right away is why that one is already. We have the money from some other place for the Title Six B and the preschool personnel. Right, very little is budgeted towards the preschool and that's just spent out initially. Thanks for the clarification. And then also that ESSER one had like $150 left in it was all, that's why that one is all spent out. We had to have that one spent out by the end of the first quarter. And that's why that one is completely spent out as well. I was more concerned about ESSER two and three, whether we had things to spend those on that were legit to spend them on so we don't end up um, you know, wasting them. Yeah, definitely. Um, all of those budgets were set at the beginning of the school year. Um, the grant uh, director has a really nice spreadsheet that we can, we'll have her include in the next, uh, her next report and it shows what all of those are going to. Okay, and then the 38% versus Yeah, so I think that will uh, balance out as soon as I get the budget amendment done for all the salaries and benefits with the change in negotiations. I think that will level that one back out. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Board member McCumbie. Yeah, I was just looking, I uh, saw that the school lunch, we'd already expended 452,000. Uh, the budget was 841. So it looks like the remaining is 388. Are we going to be like, going to go over on that this year? When we're going to semester? Um, possibly. We have been really heavy on our ordering though. So hopefully we're going to fix that starting January. So thank you. Other comments or questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's all. Uh, President Ingle, I, at this time, I'd like to call up uh, Riley Ownby, our special education director. Riley Ownby, Director of Special Education and Federal Programs. Um, so just a quick snapshot of what we've been doing in special ed. It's everything, if not static, so constantly moving. Uh, we are wrapping up our semester. We've held 32 eligibility meetings and 67 IEP meetings. To date, um, our all of our itinerants have finished up their quarter two uh, visits. We are very fortunate in Valdez and visiting with other directors across the state. Um, all of our itinerants are staff. So we have an OT, we have a PT, we have a school psychologist, we have a speech and language pathologist. Um, so we're very fortunate in that regard. And they are, um, they're fantastic at what they do. Um, I was able to meet with my SPED staff, my teachers and paraprofessionals at the last um, in-service that we had in November. And that was fantastic, an opportunity to talk about um, confidentiality, professional development. And um, in February, we've got seven spots allocated for staff, both certified and classified, to attend the Alaska State Special Education Conference. So that'll be great. I've got one paraprofessional who's going to go. I'm going to be going. And then I've got um, a few teachers who are going, including one who's going to be presenting. And then um, I have a teacher who, in March, is going to be going to the National Special Education Conference. So that's a wonderful opportunity to get to broaden our scope beyond just what's going on in Alaska and start to network with other people nationally. Um, and then federal programs, um, the activities that we have going, 
And um, like Amber mentioned in my next report, I can share with you the spreadsheet that shows how all of our dollars are allocated in federal programs. Um, and then January and February, I'll begin stakeholder meetings, um, specifically with our Title I, Indian Ed, and Migrant Ed, so that we can look at the upcoming events and projects that we have planned for this semester, in addition to uh, start to generate ideas of how we want to allocate those funds um, for next year. Question. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, we have the consent agenda. And there are three items under consent agenda. The first one is approved personal action report. The second one is the first reading of board policy 3590 electronic signatures. And the third is first reading of board policy 5113 absences and excuses. Does anyone want to pull anything from the consent agenda? Oh, board member Todd. I'd like to pull number three. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So, um, board member Todd would like to pull first reading of board policy 5113 absences and excuses. So, that'll call the end of new business. And with that, go ahead and please vote on the consent agenda. I move to approve. Oh, sorry. The consent yeah, thank agenda you. Thank you. Items one and two. Second. Okay. So, board member Winchester moved to approve the consent agenda, and it was seconded by board member Wade. Now, please vote. Board member Todd. Aye. Seven yeah, zero nays. Motion passes. All right. Now we have under new business approved the middle school Nordic ski head coach and assistant coach positions. Would you like to present that, Mr. Bauer? Oh, oh sorry. Approve <laughs> the GMS head Nordic ski and assistant Nordic ski coaching positions. Thank Second. You. Okay. Board member Winchester moved to approve. The uh, middle school Nordic ski head coach and assistant coach positions, and it was seconded by board member Wade. Now, Mr. Bauer. Thank you, President Engel. Uh, this is more of a formality. The reason we're approving this in the, in the board meeting is uh, it was just omitted from the negotiated agreement. But what I will try to do is uh, work with BAFT to get an amendment to have it added so we don't have to uh, do this every year. Thank you very much. Comments or questions? Public comment. Oh. Yes, board member Todd. Uh, just a question and cl clarification. I certainly hope we have enough skiers to um, to do this. I um, am all for skiing, as anybody who knows me knows. But um, in the past, we haven't had very many skiers, and the Junior high coach or the middle school coach has helped the high school coach and the high school coach has helped the middle school coach, um, including it at some of the meets. Um, are we looking to have enough have enough people to justify this many positions? I, I truly hope so. Do we know? It's kind of hard to tell when there hasn't been any snow yet. Thank you, Board Member Todd. I, I don't have the exact number, but I see them getting gearing up and getting ready at the high school every day after school <laughs> this week, last week, and this week. And it, uh, there's a there's a pretty good showing on the team, and I, I so it's I don't have the exact number, but it looks like a pretty good turnout. Yeah, it, I can't speak to GMS, but I know um, the uh, Mr. Wagner, the athletic director, has made a comment at the basketball parent meeting, I believe, that there are quite a few of all these high school skiers. Um, double digits. So I, I know that, and they were looking forward to hopefully getting outside when we had snow because they've been uh, practicing with them. So, or indoors. Well, I, yeah, I certainly hope that we have this, have that many kids and uh, um, it really does help to have multiple um, instructors because we have people kind of at all levels of skiing uh, from beginning. It was kind of like 
it's kind of like you're doing little dribblers at the same time you're doing um, people who are headed to nationals. And so it's very useful, but I just want to make sure that we're kind of consistent as to um, how many coach positions we allocate to um, various sports, um, depending on turnout. As I say, I am all for more ski coaches. I, can, I guess I can comment as a as the prior GMS uh, Nordic ski coach, um, somewhat on numbers and participation. Uh, I don't know what the final number is this year for interest students, but I know there was several. There was a lot of returners from last year, and we were at like fourteen or sixteen last year. And uh, I know that the the original point of having having this program start in the middle school so that we did have a feeder program for the high school because. The numbers were way down about four years ago where they almost didn't have enough for a team and it's it's really turned that around they're getting kids that are now skiing because they started skiing in middle school so um yeah i'm, I'm all for it as well okay. other comments or questions a public comment please vote board member Chuck. Aye. Seven yeas, zero nays, motion passes. Second item on the agenda is approved curriculum director position. I get a motion. I move to approve the curriculum director position. The board member Wade moved to approve the curriculum director position and it was seconded by board member Prox. Thank you very much. Uh, this position, I think, is going to be an incredible asset to uh, to the district, especially with the Reeds Act and the vertical alignment and, and eventual horizontal alignment alignment. Rather, uh, I I apologize for not having a job description included in the packet. I will get that to the board members, but it's a it's a standard curriculum director position. Uh, no surprise with the element of coach a a coaching component, teacher coaching component involvement. Uh, and the the uh, salary range will fall within the administrative starting administrator salary step. Any questions? Comments or questions? Board member Todd. Uh, administrators' schedules often their salaries have to do with how many days they do. Is this a school year? Or is this an extended contract like, like some of the, you know, the different principles? How do you picture it? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shad. I, I apologize. It would be a, a 200, we're expecting 215 day contract, which uh, just for comparison, I believe uh, the elementary principal right now is a 216 day contract. And the high school and middle school have 210 day contracts. Other comments or questions from the board? Public comment? Aye. Aye. Zero names, motion passes. Next item on the agenda is approve the rehire of tenured staff for the 2023-2024 school year. I get a motion. I move to uh, approve uh, tenured staff for the 2023-24 school year. Second. Okay, board member McCombie made the motion to approve the rehire of tenured staff for the 2023-2024 school year, and it was seconded by board member Gunderson. Thank you again, and I I do want to just highlight that Valdez is blessed to at least in in the retention of qualified staff. Uh, where I go to meetings and there's just the turnover, turnover, turnover of conversation up to the point of where we're you know H one visas for foreign teachers are, is the topic of conversation. So I do uh, appreciate the board approving all these, and uh, and, and I just think we should take. I recognize that this established staff that we have is uh, rare, and, and I, I'm, we are very fortunate to have 
have teachers remain participants. Such a long time. Thank you. Board comment or questions? Public comment? Board member Todd, did you have a comment? No. Okay. All right, go ahead and vote. Aye. Aye. Seven yeas, zero nays, motion passes. And then the item that was moved from the consent agenda is now item number four, and that is the first reading of board policy five three absences and excuses. Move to approve the uh, um, that item. It actually comes from a committee, so it probably doesn't need a second, but that's all right. Okay, all right, well, for good measure. Um, board member Todd made the motion and was seconded by board member Wayne. So, so Kathy, would you like to start us off? Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the policy committee spent a lot of time on this. Um, and uh, the thing that, that I didn't notice during that, uh, uh, maybe uh, Board Member McCumbie and Mr. Bauer uh, already debated this, but if you go down to the, I think it's the second page, um, there's a definition of truancy. And um, there, right there. Um, well, no, this is, that's, that's later on. Okay, so, so the problem is that the definition of truancy for the law that's quoted there is that the parent didn't know. So that unfortunately doesn't, um, uh, doesn't describe a lot of our situations. You know, there, there is the, the kid, usually an older kid who, you know, is absent from home, but is also absent from school. And that's the definition of truancy. Um, but higher up in this in this policy, it um, well it, it defines truancy that way, and we also have a problem with with uh, families being truant, so to speak, um, families not being um, legit in in why kids are absent from school. It's not legitimate Ill illness or um, uh, a well considered family trip that uh, can't be done at any other time, or it's not a tight uh, medical visit to Anchorage. It's kind of like, well, let's leave on Wednesday, do an appointment on Thursday to kind of hang out and we'll be back on Tuesday. I mean, I don't know all the details, but we just have a, a big problem with, with um, kids just being absent a lot. Uh, without considering uh, what that's doing to how fast the class can move and how much they personally gonna, are going to learn. And um, I just don't want this paragraph to make it sound like uh, there's a law, <laughs> which there unfortunately is not, for, um, for families knowingly having, letting their kids sleep in or kind of taking all day when you really could have just done the medical appointment uh, faster than that or whatever. So I don't know what we ought to do about that, but I don't think this is totally finished and I would love to have people's suggestions as to what else we should add to it or change about it. I don't think it's wrong the way it is. So if, you know, we could pass this and, and work on it more later um, uh, because you can see that what we what we did moving, some of it's just moving paragraphs around, but some of it is, is uh, changing it a bit. So I'm gonna look to the board for, because this is what the policy committee put forward, right? And so it sounds like, um, Kathy, you're wanting input from the board or should we send it back to the, um, policy committee or are you wanting because we've heard of some discussion about attendance is this something that we look at passing now but we know moving forward we're going to 
look at it again and revise it based on some feedback and direction from um, Mr. Bauer and the administrators or what's, I mean, Anyone. That's that's why I pulled it because I, I think that it this isn't just a slam dunk like the how we do electronic signatures. I think this is something that people uh, need to weigh in on. And if we could fix this in some way right now, that'd be great. Um, if not, uh, I don't know whether the board wants to send this back to committee um, if they could fix it at the moment or whatever. Um, board Member McCombie may he was uh, thinking about it. Um, over the last few days, too, and I don't know whether he came up with some suggestions. Yeah, um, I know. I know we kind of discussed this over uh, email with each other. Um, I guess what I was trying to convey is that I know that it, the wording in the current policy does say truancy, and you're thinking, or am I correct in thinking that you're? What it's referring to is specifically like a child skipping school or just and their parents not knowing about it. Okay, so I, I think I can answer this. Uh, if you read the statute 1430.010, which deals with um, compulsory attendance, it does specifically state that parents must ensure that, the, you know, if their child is enrolled in public school, uh, if they're between that age age group of six and seven, or excuse me, six and uh, sixteen, excuse me, uh, they have. I, I'll just read it verbatim here. It'd probably be the okay. easiest. That way, I don't fudge it here. Uh, so every child between seven and sixteen years of age shall attend a school at the public school in the district in which the child resides during the school term. Every parent, guardian, or other person having the responsibility for or control of a child between seven and 16 years of age shall maintain the child in attendance at a public school in the district in which the child resides for the entire school term. And then it lists some exceptions, but those are generally referred to like if they're in an alternative uh, or homeschool program. Uh, but essentially the violation isn't necessarily the child. It is also the parent if the parent is um, uh, assisting with said truancy. So uh, if, a, if a parent is responsible for or aiding or um, in that truant behavior, then the parent is also um, responsible. So maybe just a change in wording, we could remove the truancy if, if you're uncomfortable with that and just change it to that heading of just make a compulsory attendance uh, that way it aligns with the statute that might be appropriate. So, can you do it? Would somebody like to make an amendment? I move to amend uh, the uh, policy as presented to change the word truancy that's in the middle of our screen right at the moment to compulsory attendance. Okay. Second. So board member Todd has made a motion to change the heading of truancy to compulsory attendance and um, in the policy and it was seconded by board member McCumber. Any uh, further comment? Public comment? Okay, go ahead and vote. Aye. Seven yeas, zero nays, motion passes. Okay. Are there any other amendments or changes or thoughts? Yes, Board Member Fox. Um, I just wondered if this has all the tools needed for the administrators and um, Mr. Weber, you mentioned in your, you know, that is this, does this capture what is needed? Yeah, Mr. Brown. Um, I can speak to that board member of fact. Uh, this, what it does is just uh, um, in conjunction with working with the administration to enforce and the key element, which I think is perhaps has been lacking is the awareness to parents. And so what um, my first order of business is going to be is to 
fully up next experience saying this is the new policy, this is, these are the expectations, these are the reasons why I the with as much information as I can possibly provide to how um, just simply being in school is a benefit to youth education. Uh, but uh, so when you to answer your question is it's to have all the ingredients, it's it's a major ingredient that we can uh, build off of this. Is there, um, I guess, just is this? In, in, I'm sure the committee has already looked at that, but is this enough? Does this is there? Are there things that you would want to come to us to um, take out of this? Are you're going to summarize this shorter for the parents? Yes, I'm very happy with what the committee came up with as far as this policy with the changes. But it, it just gives a, a, the administrators, administrators team a, just uh, it's pretty clear and direct on what I think it will eliminate is uh, the, the unnecessary absences that are is what I believe. I, I was going to bring you had mentioned your you know starting the next semester off with with this and notifying parents. Um, I hope you do that. Or I would encourage you to do that the old school way of sending a piece of paper home that the student and the parent have to sign, not just a uh, an email. Or I think that adds a little more importance to what you're doing. Um, we just had to do that for a dance thing coming up, so this certainly is uh, as important as that. So yeah, I will I will work with the administrative team on on making sure that there's uh, accountability for the awareness. Thank you. Yes, board member McCumbie. Yeah, um, the one thing we did address uh, in here was the issue of makeup work. Um, as you can see, the, the change that was added in there. Um, the one thing we did not do was spell out the time frame in which the work must be completed, um, which may be something that we might need to do. It's under the section makeup work, because in the case of like an illness or a family emergency, they get one day for each day absent. We want to allow that same amount of time for somebody that's going on a pre-planned vacation, or should it just be due upon return? Uh, what is, do we need to spell that out? Because if it's subjective, then what is it? Or what's, I guess, what's the current policy for that? If somebody goes on a planned vacation, how long are they allowed when they return to complete the work or have the work in? Because I know that Mr. Weber had stated that, you know, you have, Three different kids go on vacation at different times, and then you've got three different due dates for those kids when they come back, or you know, and it makes it difficult on the teachers. So, how do you, uh, I guess, maybe that's a discussion that needs to be had with um, with both teachers and administrators on what they feel is equitable and a, and a fair uh, idea for that. Um. Thank you, board member. Can we, are we, I, I just want to clarify with the, we're specifically topic, talking about the paragraph under makeup work. Uh, the, my understanding in the committee was to have it, uh, that it would be a, completed during the absence and, uh, um, the, the, and, and due upon return. So I put in, I think the failure to complete the makeup work assigned uh, upon return or would that satisfy it or that I, I believe that was the intent from the meeting. Uh, so maybe uh, maybe we should amend that. So, so wait, wait. Okay. So do upon return. That means like if they're gone for two weeks, when they get back on Monday, they have to turn it all in. If they go on a pre-planned vacation, like not like a medical absence, yeah. but like if somebody says I'm going to Hawaii. They are expected to do that and have to turn it in upon return. Uh, for sports, they have to do pre makeup before they go. No, but we we didn't we change that. It's not because it's a lot of it's just signed off and then they have time to do it. I don't think because I thought that changed because I remember because I know before with 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 sports it used to be that they had to do it before they left and then what we found or what should say we students would come back. And well, the teacher didn't do that. And so they ended up, and so then they were, they had done the work for no reason. And so I thought that that had changed, but I, I think before, I guess how I feel, and I, I see you, um, board member Todd, with your hand up. Okay. 
or I feel that the board puts parameters around this, I would want to have input from the administrator. I agree. I would. I, I think that'd be beneficial. Okay. But I think that's something that we need to, to so look at. Pat Meese, go ahead, Board Member Proctor. You can say something. I was just going to say I, I don't think that that's handled uniformly yeah. throughout the district, and maybe that's okay, but that's not what we said. So can we take it back to the policy committee with some guidance on these things, like with the or the what is it makeup work and. The other thing that I heard that I was reading under, uh, oh, under parent notification, I think what I heard from um, Mr. Weber is he would like to see something about three days. So maybe that's something that needs to be added under parent notification. Instead, I'm concerned with six, that's a whole week. That's like a week of school that you're missing before you're, there's a notification. So maybe there is something to be said for Three days. Any other thoughts from board members? Oh, yes, Kathy, sorry. Um, I also would like to hear from the administrators and the teachers um, what they think about the makeup versus pre makeup versus whatever. Um, what I have seen in the past when we we tried to do the, uh, oh, you've got to have it all in the day you get back from vacation, is that people would just take an extra day um, or two so that their kids would have time after they got back from Hawaii to do their homework. And if that's counterproductive, they're out for two more days of class. Um, also, when my kids were doing pre-makeup way back when for high school sports, um, there were many teachers who didn't want them they didn't want to do the have to hand it all in before you leave. They didn't want to have to make up two tests. They wanted the kids to do the test when they got back. They wanted them to, um, you know, hand in the paper when they got back or whatever. You know, each class was individual. And I think back then it was very, um, it wasn't sloppy, but each teacher got the, the choice to just sign it in with a promissory note that you're going to take the test Monday or Tuesday when you get back versus the, they had to make up a separate test so that they could give out a test on the Wednesday before they were planning on giving the test on Friday. So I, I think that it, we need to find out what, from the teachers and the administrators what would be the best um, to support them in, yeah, you can't take the rest of the semester to do your makeup work, um, but what would, what, what's reasonable? And how much discretion do they want individual teachers to have? So just before we meet next time, I guess, um, before a policy review meets next time, is that something that we could get, I guess, I don't know how that, that's yeah. going to look. I mean, I guess, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, it, so if it's, if it's kicked back, it's kicked back to the policy, if that's what we decide to do in this process, which I'm not really exactly sure how it goes, but I know Joe can let us know, or Kathy. Um, we can have uh, Mr. Bauer with some specifics about the makeup versus pre-makeup and then getting feedback from the administrators, teachers, and then also on that three-day parent notification too. Father? I think that you know, when, when we're discussing the, the absent policy, this wasn't without communication with the teacher's administration. So I, I feel very comfortable speaking on behalf of them, and especially at the secondary level, meeting with staff and hearing all of their their concerns. With, with the makeup work, it is exact, that's what's being proposed is exactly the problem. It's students choosing or, or parents choosing to take their children on vacation for two weeks. So that train keeps moving. And then when they come back, if they get two weeks to make it up, now you have it, it, you're, you're a, a lot of, uh, depending on how many students are gone, the burden on the instructor is, is great. So the, the preference for the staff is if, if you're going to go to Hawaii for two weeks, here's the two weeks worth of work. It better be done when you return. 
It's not. There are consequences. It's, and it's and what, exactly what we talked about before with this, the behavior of and the attitude towards um, absenteeism, where it's just casual things, is exactly what we're trying to rein in. So I, I can meet with the staff and do surveys, but I assure you that's going to be too slow. Um, yes, go ahead. Uh, board Member Winchester, were you going to say something? And then Board Member Prox, and then we'll go to Board Member Tapp. I was just, um, it sounds like you really want this approach and you can play with it more and move on from there, but I think it's an urgent enough situation that we need to make any tweaks we want right now and get it into that process. That's what it sounds like. Go ahead, Board Member Prox. Yeah, I don't want to delay um, what you're doing. Uh, if there's no reason you can't call it three days, you just have to call it six with this. So we could, that could be something that could be a practice, I guess. Um, and if there's anything to um, put the work on the students more, if it is up, if you treat uh, if you treat absences and activities differently, I'm all right with that. I think the kids who are in activities shouldn't cause extra work for teachers. That, that should be something um, that they do. It should be up to the teacher whether it works if we want it in Wednesday or we want it in Monday. I'm for the flexibility of that um, to the teachers. I think we are creating a lot of extra work. And there's a huge amount of uh, uh, unexcused absences aside, there's a ton of activities and a good deal, but part of that the kids should be, the the, uh, the work should definitely fall on the kid, not the teacher as least as possible. I'm I'm fine using this. You're telling me that it that it does what you need it to do, um, and there's no reason we can't do more. I just want to make sure that that enables it. And then board member Tab. I would like to argue also for passing this today. This is a board policy and we could have an AR um, proposed with it for the, how long do you have to make up the makeup, makeup work? Or you know, some of these little nuances could be in the AR instead of in the po policy. Also process wise, we have two readings. And if we make what we think are major changes between the first reading and the second reading, then you have to have a third reading. But if you make minor tweaks, we decide when we make those minor tweaks, whether they're minor or they're major. And if they think they're minor, we go ahead with, this, with the uh, passing it at the second reading. So I, I also don't want to wait till another policy review committee in January on the third, you know, that's a whole nother month and a half. And it would be nice to have something that the uh, administration could put out at the beginning of the next semester. So I would like to see us do a first reading today if we could. Sounds good. Okay, so that's what I kind of hear consensus then. All right, so because we've amended it with right now, the only thing that we've made the change is the truancy to compulsory attendance. Now we vote on that and then it'll go that way for the second reading. Is that my understanding? Okay. All right. So with that, is there any further board comment? No? no? Public comment. All right. And now we're we're voting on the, I just want to read it correctly here. The first reading of board policy 5113 absences of excuses with the amendment to change truancy in the heading topic to compulsory attendance. Okay. Board member Tom. Are you asking for vote? Yes. Seven yeah, zero nays motion passes. Okay. Okay, so with that, we are to board business from the floor. floor. Comments from board members. We'll start with that uh, board member McCombie. Let me get to go first. Uh, I got to go to the Herman Hutchins uh, winter concerts. That uh, was a great uh, uh, K through four concert. And I also got to go to the fifth grade performance the day after. Those were both great. Um, I'm looking forward to the GMS play, The Lion King, this Thursday, uh, 
at 7 p.m. Should be great. I've seen a lot of the rehearsals. The students have worked really hard. So if anybody's free, I encourage you to go. There's also a matinee on Friday, I think at 1, if you are available for either of those times. That's all I got. Thanks. Member Wade. Uh, yes, I just wanted to um, thank Shannon for all her work um, party last weekend. Um, that was that was good. Um, I just wanted to say that I appreciated the format of the district reports. That there's starting to look like some consistency and kind of alignment around our goals and, and though obviously your details are different amongst your your buildings or, or specialty areas there is sort of red being run across them that starts to tell the narrative of where the district's at so I appreciate that um, and I know that comes with work on your part when you have to change kind of the style of your report so I, I just wanted to acknowledge that that work and thank you for it and then um, echo Mr. Weber's sentiments uh, for the student teacher. Um, thank you for her service and thank you for the district, not only Mr. Weber, but um, also her host teacher. That is a whole nother level of teaching that um, when you take on a student teacher, now you're not just tasked with making sure the kids in your class are, are learning, but also the young adult in your class. That is a whole nother level of mentoring um, and it's important for the profession and. So I just wanted to thank the, those people involved. That's not nothing that is meaningful. And like Mr. Ever said, it, even if she doesn't stay here, there's no telling where that path may lead. So thank you for that. Board member Todd. Um, I just like to say that I got to go to the high school concert, high school music concert, which was um, uh, very well done. Um, it's amazing. You can see the progression when you have the, the middle school and, and the high school jazz band uh, next to each other is pretty amazing. Um, uh, I also wanted to uh, commend Mr. Um, Bauer for his uh, new decision to meet with each of the board members um, once a month uh, to discuss his issues and ours. And I think that's a, a real step in the right direction in terms of, of communication. Um, and I am, truly impressed at the number of different balls we have going that everybody, you know, we have a whole bunch of issues that all had to be done yesterday. And um, uh, I think that uh, the correct amount of patience and the correct amount of urgency is uh, happening in the district. And I have great hopes um, for the new year. Thank you. And I actually do not have anything to say. I was just trying to think like, Something popped in my head, but then it popped right back out. So there's that. Um, and then with that, we have the, some information items. The check warrants is in the agenda packet. The end of the quarter is December 16th. Winter break is scheduled for December 19th through January 3rd. Um, there is a teacher work day and no school on January 3rd. And then future meeting dates, we will have a, oh, I said January 12th, but apparently it's January 9th. That's correct, right? Yes, because today is the 12th. Okay, so we have a future meeting dates. We have a work session on January 9th at 6 p.m. And the topic for that January 9th work session will be on the Reads Act. And then it will be followed by a regular school board meeting at 7 p.m. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.